Genetic counselors assess individuals and families for genetic disorders. In this video, we're going to help you answer the question, should you become a genetic counselor in 2020? We're going to go over the latest salaries, job market statistics, and the latest trends. Coming up. Hey everyone, Stephen Hack here with Career Watch, where I help you with your career search. If you end up enjoying the video, hit that thumbs up to support the channel. All the charts and graphs in this video are available at my blog at www.careerwatch.co. Genetic counselors provide information and support to individuals and families with potential inherited conditions. They have a number of roles and responsibilities. They interview patients to get individual and family histories. They write detailed genetic reports for patients and families. They discuss options and risks with patients, and often they provide emotional support to individuals and families. On Reddit, Chavia writes the following about becoming a genetic counselor. Just a few thoughts. You go to grad school to get trained in having hard conversations with patients. Very few people are naturally gifted at this, but most leave school feeling much more comfortable. It is an unavoidable part of the job in almost every specialty. They also write that shift work is not typical in this field. They usually work normal business hours. Next, let's get into how genetic counselors are compensated. Now, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has only been surveying this occupation since 2012. This is a relatively new occupation, and it is extremely small at this point. In 2012, the government recorded the average base salary of genetic counselors at $55,820. This rose to $84,310 in 2019, just seven years later. So wages for this occupation are actually growing really quickly at a rate of $4,000 per year if you average the average wage growth between 2012 and 2019. This means that the estimated 2020 salary for genetic counselors would be around $88,000 per year. If we were to plot this over the next 10 years, by 2029, genetic counselor wages would be around $125,000 per year. So wages for this occupation are definitely growing really quickly. We'll see if this continues over the next 10 years. Now, geography does play a role in the compensation of genetic counselors. In fact, comparing the highest paying state versus the lowest paying state, there's actually a $41,000 difference in base salaries between the highest paying and lowest paying state. The highest paying state on average is the state of California, where the average genetic counselor earns around $104,000 per year. Other high paying states include Connecticut, Nevada, New York, and Colorado. Click the description in my video below or go to my blog post to see the full list. Lowest paying states include Florida with an average base salary of around 63,000, Maryland, North Carolina, and Michigan. The grayed out states in this map mean that the government don't actually have enough information for that state to make a judgment call on the average compensation in those states. So here's how that 2019 average base salary breaks down. The bottom 10% of genetic counselors, this would kind of be a starting salary for genetic counselor, would be around 61,000 per year. But the top 10% of genetic counselors, those that have lots of experience in the field or, or are an extremely hot job market, they start at around 115,000 and kind of go up from there. So there's actually a $53,000 difference between the 10th, kind of the starting salary of a genetic counselor, and the 90th percentile, where a seasoned professional Work environment also plays a role in the compensation of genetic counselors. Labs on average tend to pay, pay the most amount of money, around 94,000 per year, and higher education tends to pay the least. We kind of see this with almost all the occupations that I've surveyed, higher education always tends to pay the least amount of money to professionals around the country. So there's a $17,000 difference between genetic counselors that work in labs and genetic counselors that work in higher education. Now, compared to similar occupations, genetic counselors do pretty well. They out-earn educational counselors who make on average around 61, and they out-earn mental health counselors who make around 50. Genetic counselors are out-earned by physician assistants and school psychologists. But this could change going forward because wages for genetic counselors seem to be on an upward trajectory. They're making more and more money every single year. So what is the job market like for genetic counselors? This is a tiny occupation. There was 2,390 employed genetic counselors in 2019, and there was only about 2,000 in 2012. This means there was a gain of about 390 jobs from 2012 to 2019. 
Unfortunately for genetic counselors, the government is anticipating that job growth is really going to pick up. They're predicting a 21% growth in jobs over the next 10 years. But because this is such a tiny occupation, this really just means another 600 jobs for this occupation. With ongoing innovations in genetics and genomics, counselors will be given more opportunities to conduct more types of analyses. So genetic counselors might have more of an ability to offer more and more services to patients with genetic disorders and inherited conditions. In fact, the number and types of tests that genetic counselors can administer have increased over the past few years. So one thing I really like to do is I like to try and figure out how competitive different occupations are. And to do this, I use indeed.com. So I went on indeed.com and I used the search term genetic counselor in the United States. It gave me 241 job openings across the country. This means that at the recording of this video, there is one job opening on indeed.com per 10 employed genetic counselors. This is a pretty good ratio. There isn't a shortage of genetic counselors, but there's ample job opportunities for people in this field at this point in time. The most extreme case of this I have seen is oral surgeons. There is one job opening per five employed oral surgeons. Also genetic counselors work in a couple different work environments. The vast majority work in hospitals. 43% of them work in hospitals, 13% work in doctor's offices, 12% higher education, 11% work in labs, and interestingly, about 5% are self-employed. So how does a person become a genetic counselor? Uh, typically, it is recommended that genetic counselors get a master's degree and become board certified, but the government did do a survey in 2017, and they surveyed the education of genetic counselors, and this is kind of what they found. They found that 11% had a high school degree or equivalent, 15% had some college, 8% an associate's degree, 37% a bachelor's degree, 25% a master's degree, and 3% a doctorate. So it is recommended to get a master's degree and become board certified in this occupation, but many people seem to be getting into this occupation without those requirements. So what kind of people actually become genetic counselors? Well, if you haven't done a Holland Code or a Ryasec assessment, definitely do. There's quite a few free ones online. This lets you figure out what your interests are and compare your interests with people in various occupations. For genetic counselors, they tend to score high in the social and the investigative themes. People that score high in the social theme tend to describe themselves as helpful, cooperative, kind, cheerful, and patient. And they're often motivated by helping, empowering, and instructing others. People that score high in the investigative theme tend to describe themselves as thoughtful, analytical, intellectual, complex, and curious. And they are often motivated by analyzing, inquiring, and researching. So as you can see, there are pros and cons to becoming a genetic counselor in 2020. This is a very tiny occupation with around 2,000 jobs across the country. Wages are growing rapidly at a rate of about $4,000 per year, and this is much higher than many other occupations. The government is predicting a 21% increase in the number of jobs, but this will only be around 600 jobs over the next 10 years. But when I did do a search on indeed.com, I did find that there was one job opening per in 10, per 10 employed genetic counselors. This means that this field is not saturated yet. It is not like becoming a lawyer or social worker where there's lots of people trying to get those jobs. Less people are going into this. Are you a genetic counselor? What has been your experience in this occupation? Do you like it or do you dislike it? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.